This is Obi with Rod Organics, bringing you another episode of Organic Vegetable Gardening, where we learn to be better gardeners. Today, we're going to talk about the value of microbes in organic gardening. To me, microbes is really what organic gardening is all about. How do you actually take care of the soil that produces your plants? Uh, tending to the microbes starts at the very beginning of a plant's life with the soil. Here in this tub, I have mixed a couple gallons of my general potting soil that I start my seedlings in. It's a uh, one half part peat moss, one half part vermiculite. And to that I'm going to add a few different kinds of microbes that are going to grow into the soil and grow onto the roots of the plants that are going to be most beneficial. Uh, first of which is compost. Compost is, while on the one hand, about nutrition, on the other hand, that nutrition is derived from biology, so compost is really a broad spectrum biological inoculant that contains all kinds of decomposing uh, microbes, but also some microbes that restructure the soil into different kinds of textures, like humus. I'm just going to put in a single handful of compost and mix it into my soil. I don't want my soil to be very heavy for my seedlings, and a single handful does pretty good. We don't need too many microbes from compost in the very beginning of their life because there's not that much organic matter in the soil to be broken down. Okay. The other products that I like to add to the soil are mycorrhizae and rhizosphere beneficial bacteria. Uh, there's, I have some examples of both. Uh, for mycorrhizae, I have here mycos. This is the wettable powder version from Extreme Gardening. Uh, mycorrhizae are root beneficial fungi. For our purpose as vegetable gardeners, all of the mycorrhizae that we use are called endomycorrhizae, and they're mycorrhizae that penetrate the cell wall of the root and actually se share cellular functions with the plant. It's really good stuff because it provides all sorts of water and nutrients to your plant when uh, in our droughty conditions your plant would otherwise be seriously stressed. Uh, importantly, mycorrhizae will live after one plant dies, your next plant you plant into that soil, and as soon as the roots hook up and touch one of the mycorrhizae, you, your roots have automatically sort of gained the ability to attract water from this huge fungal network of the mycorrhizae below the soil. Very good stuff. I highly recommend it. The other product that I recommend, uh, an, well, an example is uh, Zosporillum brasiliensa. This is a product called Azos, again from Extreme Gardening. Uh, and this is a powdered product that contains Zosporillum brasiliensa, which is a nitrogen fixing bacteria. It is really good for grasses and vegetables in the warm weather. I think it's a good product here in Texas. It does pretty well. It provides a lot of nitrogen for your plants. That way you don't have to spend as much money supplementing with things like fish meal or alfalfa meal or something like that. Uh, and with these, you just sprinkle them in and add them in uh, according to the directions. Uh, today, I'm going to be mixing in with my tomatoes a plant or a product that's called Power Saver Plus by Plant Healthcare. Uh, it includes mycorrhizae, and it also includes uh, four or five different species of beneficial bacteria, uh, all of which, some of which fix nitrogen, some of which solubilize phosphorus. Um, so in general, it's a good product that makes available all the stuff in your soil that's not currently available. If you're intending to have organic produce for yourself to eat that's 100% organic, you need to be careful with products like this. I accidentally bought this product not realizing that it was a, a 343 that included some amount of fertilizer. So all of these are going to be non-organic tomatoes. Okay. I need to add one ounce per gallon of soil I'm going to mix. I'm going to mix two gallons of soil. So I add in two ounces of my mycorrhizal product. Stir it up, pot it, and then plant my seed. The second stage in caring for your microbial life on your plants is the foliar microbes. Not only are microbes beneficial on the bottom of the plants and the roots, but they're also beneficial on the tops and the leaves and on the stalk. The reason is mostly because of competition. As long as you have a bunch of either beneficial or at least harmless bacteria and fungi on the uh, surface of a plant, it's going to be very hard for any sort of a disease-based microbe to invade and to be able to outcompete that beneficial microbe. Uh, some of the most basic beneficial microbes that you can spray here, I have a bottle of what I've already pre-mixed as a lactobacilli ferment. Uh, this is activated EM1, effective microorganisms. You can look it up on Google. It's a 
product that has a few different microbes in it. They're all anaerobic. Very good product because uh, these microbes are beneficial for the plant. They cause decomposition of unhealthy plant material and they secrete acids which is going to help to control the pH in our heavy pH soil. Mix up a little spray bottle and give it a spritz. Make sure you hit everything from the bottom. Uh, I am from the bottom of the plants so that I get the bottom side of the leaves. That's really where all your problems are caused. And that's where there's a lot of holes and openings uh, on the leaves to actually absorb the nutrients that are inside uh, the products you're spraying. And I also go ahead and spray on the fruit. It's not going to harm anything and it's going to keep beneficial bacteria so that when you eat it, you'll get some of these good bacteria inside your belly. Trust me, it'll only do you good. Sort of like eating some yogurt. The other product that I would recommend spraying is uh, compost tea. Uh, you can see lots of videos on YouTube or uh, in particular on our website, I have a, or on our, on our channel, I have a video about our own professional compost tea brewer. And compost tea is just like compost, a very broad spectrum biological inoculant that contains all sorts of bacteria that are not gonna do harm to your plants in, unless it's bad compost. Uh, but it's not going to do harm to your plants, so it'll outcompete those disease microbes. The last thing to know about microbes and gardening is that all diseases are caused by microbes. And so we have to learn how to not only foster microbes, but how to foster the microbes that we want and how to get rid of the microbes that we don't want. In organic gardening, you're going to get diseases. No matter how many prophylactic measures we take, something's going to go wrong because we're not applying a whole lot of poisons. We're not applying a whole lot of sterilants. We're applying a lot of very targeted disease uh, disease controls and bug and pest controls so uh, you gotta know what you're doing and you gotta be ready to deal with any sort of a disease outbreak. This tomato plant's looking a little weak from the bottom up there's wilting, there's burning, there's yellowing um, it's been raining recently this is definitely not from dehydration so my guess is it's a fungus or a virus maybe a bacterial problem some kind of a wilt or uh, something like that so my answer is I'm gonna spray a little product on it that's called Serenade uh, here I have the bottle already mixed up of what I'm going to spray. Here I've got the concentrate. Uh, this is a Serenade Garden Disease Control Concentrate, good for organic gardening. Uh, all it is is uh, Bacillus subtilis strain QST 713, a specific strain of a bacteria. Not all Bacillus subtilis strains do the same thing. Some of them were used like Pepto-Bismol 100 years ago. But this one right here eats all sorts of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. So you mix it up according to the directions for your plant, give it a good shake, and spray it. And you just be very careful to get a nice fine mist all over the entire plant from the bottom up, especially where you think the disease is. What this uh, serenade is going to do, and the way a lot of our biological controls work that are controlling diseases in organic gardening, is this is one bacteria that eats another bacteria or another fungus. We spray one microbe that eats other microbes instead of eating plants. So you just have to buy the right product that's guaranteed to eat the microbes that you've got. After you've given the plant a good dowsing from the top to bottom, from bottom to top and the uh, underside of the leaves, all you can do is wait. You can brew up your own aerobic pesticides by taking any sort of an aerobic bacteria like Serenade mixing it with some molasses and some high nutrient sea salt into a compost tea brewer, simply replacing the compost in the recipe with the serenade product or with your aerobic bacteria. Run the tea brewer as described, uh, and if you run the tea brewer for between 12 and 24 hours, it's plenty of time to foster a huge bloom of bacteria. You'll be able to turn a few cups of serenade into a few gallons of serenade, just as concentrated. Uh, that's a really nice thing about this product. Also with the other product that I showed before, the uh, lactobacilli, the effective microorganisms that I made. Um, if you look up how to make an activated EM1, that, you'll see that that's what I made. And you can basically take a pint or a, maybe a quart or so of EM1 and make five gallons worth of it. That, you can, that has a shelf life of a month. So uh, that's a really good product. Aerobic microbes usually cannot be bottled. Uh, Serenade is dormant, so it can be but don't buy low quality off-brand aerobic microbes. Anaerobic microbes can be bottled because they don't need oxygen to live. Those are the important lessons for this week from Organic Vegetable Gardening, where we learn how to be better gardeners. I'm Obi, we'll see you next week.